And a warm welcome to the South African of the Year Daily Show, Nindifuli Sani Ravere. Of course, this show is no different tonight. We're sitting down with a nominee who is doing extraordinary things in their individual line of work. And today, at just 18 years old, he's a Youth Leader of the Year nominee, Armand Duvanaka. His system got nominated for the Young Science Expo, and he actually ended up going to Pittsburgh in the U.S. It's called, let me get this right, it's Autonomous and Configurable Energy Management System. Is that correct? Yes, that is. <laughs> <laughs> Arman, congratulations on your nomination and all your achievements, and welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now, at such a young age, you're only 18, and here you are already making international headlines. But let's go back to when you started doing science experiments at just the age of four. What was going through your mind? I mean, Anar Kenner said, just out there playing with sand, and here you are doing experiments? Yeah, my, my father is like that. Um, that was the coolest thing for me. <laughs> the coolest thing in the world. Like, let's explode something. You know, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So tell me about the relationship that you have with your father. He's a science teacher, I understand. Mm. So is that where the passion comes from? Yes, definitely. Um, mm. he, made, he had a few classes, uh, extra classes, after school hours, and I was like, hopped along. And, like, mm. Okay. And, they, and I always observed the, the science experiments, always these amazing explosions. Um, that was super intriguing. Can you remember one of the first experiments that you saw your dad doing and you thought to yourself, I want to try that out? I can't remember what he threw together. Mm -hmm. sure. But uh, that was such, like, um, it was like a bit of um, solid mm -hmm. thrown, like, and a little bit of liquid thrown in. And everybody ran away, like, like almost like 30 meters. And... It was this super big explosion. I was like, <laughs> it was like only this small amount of dust mm. and a little bit of fluid, you know. But a huge explosion. Yeah, and it was like this huge smoke clouds and everything. And Intriguing, like, you're like, science, I'm in. It's like, okay, I dedicate my life to you right now. <laughs> That's actually strange because, you know, science is such a difficult thing, especially when we look at mathematics and science and the landscape that we find ourselves currently in this country. But here you are, a young person who, whose eyes were opened by this and it was something that you actually wanted to do. Let's talk about your very first experiment when you were in grade 10, well, the first one that got recognized mm. for the Young Science Expo. Back then, it was still called the Efficient Management Energy System before mm. you went into America. Where did that idea come about, the thinking behind it? Okay, so... I was like, I want to do an amazing, amazing invention that will change the world. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, let's, let's take a few steps back. And uh, I sat on my couch and I was like, the TV is now on. I want to switch it off. Mm -hmm. But I'm way too lazy to walk to the TV and turn it off. Okay. Like, no, not on standby, like actually off. So, um, so that's where the idea came in. It's like, okay. So let's go build something that I can... Put on my mobile phone and switch it off, and boom, there it's off. It's done. So, yeah. Yeah. And the impact of load shedding, what did that have? Because I hear it was also one of the inspirations behind the project. Definitely. Um, the, the time I started, 2014, I think that was like the most load shedding time <laughs> ever. And I was like, wait a minute, this can solve load shedding mm -hmm. at the consumer's level. Mm -hmm. And consume, the consumer is, is uh, in the in load shedding pro problem mm -hmm. they're in control of the load shedding problem mm -hmm. like let, let's let's help the grid let's switch the gears off right now and a million people do that load shedding would be a thing of the past yep and it certainly is getting to that we are going to be chatting to our mind a little bit more and also finding out exactly how the project works because lampona i guess science in mondo mondo so i'm going to need him to take it a whole lot slower but he's just a young student who is actually in matric this year so we got to spend a little bit of time with this this inventor in his space and that was at school and this is what happened <laughs> My, my father is a science teacher and um, I normally went with him with the classes and everything and uh, they they did a few explosions and a few experiments that was very very inquisitive and I just wanted to learn more. The process of 
uh, building the project and um, it, it kind of actually just started off with okay that would be cool to switch on uh, my appliances in my my house or whatever and it evolved in this amazing solution to to load shedding and uh, just a lot of money being being saved due to my project yeah the thing I'd love to change about South Africa is or, or to, to benefit or, or to, to add to the beautiful country that we have um, is to, to bring a, out a sense of I can achieve this, motivate the, the other youngsters, the other teenagers, even, even the adults um, to say you can do this um, if you work hard. That is Youth Leader of the Year nominee Armand Duvenach. If you'd like to vote for him, his code is YOUTH1. You can SMS that to 43043. You can also email YOUTH1 to satyvoting at nn7.com or visit our website, nn7.com. And remember, if you vote, you stand a chance to win double tickets, a VIP experience to Sati 2016, I beg your pardon. And our international star has been announced, so you know you want to be at the Ticket Pro Dome, right? Back to you, though, Armand. Talk me through the project and exactly how it works. You know, from the moment you come up with the idea, I'm guessing you go into a phase of some blueprints and then how you put it all together. Okay. Um, so it all started like with a, a you call it a breadboard. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's basically just a, a few strips of wire and with the holes in. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you connect uh, the wire to the component, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that, that was a starting point. Mm -hmm. So of, after all... Um, and I needed to, to measure the current flowing through the... All the appliances. The appliances, okay. yeah, exactly. So, yeah, let's say make it easy for a kettle, okay? So, first of all, when you plug in the kettle, it uses a lot of current. Um, and so I, I thought, okay, let's measure the current. How else will I know if it's on? <laughs> if it's using, okay? If there's current flowing, then it's on. I get you, okay? Yes, easy stuff. And so... So I started measuring that with the current transformer. It's basically just a, a little bit of magnet. You, mm -hmm. you plug around the cable and you can measure the, the... The current that's flowing through. The data gets saved into the, your computer, your own computer mm -hmm. database. And after all, after all that measuring and stuff, you can view that on a, on a web browser. Okay? So that was the first stage. And obviously, um, the switching came in as well. So there was two, two phases to it. You, you measure current. And then the switch status, on or off, mm -hmm. gets sent to the database as well. So obviously, if there's current flowing, the switch status is on. Okay. Yes. Now, the tricky thing came in. Um, to get it off. <laughs> exactly. Um, and that, so it's, I want to switch it off via my web browser. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to the module I built. And the, the intelligence on that thing says, okay, this system should go off and then the circuit breaks and then the kettle won't off. work anymore. But now, I mean, surely, you know, at the end of the day, it ended up working. But there must have been mistakes along the way and sure. at times where you're like, I can't figure this out. Tell me about one of those moments. I, I had this one component called the Intel Edison. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was the final phase of my project. And uh, it was the day before I went overseas. Um, we bought like five of them for in case, you know, mm. and that, that was the smartest move I ever made. <laughs> because one stopped working? <laughs> one stopped working, and I was like, okay, what, what's, what's broken? Because Boy, it you was, almost, what happens yeah, now? It came, in, it came in two parts, like the, the socket kind of, and then the, the CPU processor thing okay. that plugs into it. Um, and both are different components. Both can break really easily. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. Maybe the processes are broken, so I plugged it out and I put a new one in. Still nothing. Still nothing. <laughs> and I was like, try to read a voltage on it, and that process was also blown. Mm. So two processes were blown. And I was like, okay, let's try it again. Maybe, maybe it's like at such because it's really sensitive to. And you're leaving the next day for America for right? this worldwide young science expo, mm. and you're thinking so about stressful. working. So stressful. So <laughs> stressful. Um, and. Eventually, after, after the third CPU I've blown, process I've blown, I found it was like the, 
the bottom board that was broken. That and was the problem. Yeah, and, oh, that was so stressful. <laughs> and each component cost about 2,000 Rand. Wow. So 6,000 Rand gone Later. right there. Yeah. When you got to America, to Pittsburgh, and it was the, the, the young scientists, I mean, that's 1,700 of the youngest, brightest minds around the world. And you, here you are, one of the people who were chosen in a category that's very, very difficult, and you're in the top three. The experience of being amongst other smart kids like you, mm. and some who are even smarter than you, wasn't that intimidating for you? So intimidating. I came out of South Africa being, I'm the smartest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm the best in South Africa. Nobody can show me difference, you know. Mm. I'm the smartest man. Everything turned so quickly around when I arrived. Mm. Um, all the projects in my eyes were better than me. Like, it's like, how did they come up with that idea? It was like brilliant stuff. Um, and I thought, so tiny. Mm. Um, this guy that won a quick category, actually, he made a new GPS system. Wow. Um, instead of the three satellites. He, like, he made, like, just like a basketball spun a bit of wire around and made a, made a, made a uh, prototype mm -hmm. that picked up those signals and then they could triangulate where the, the device is compared to that and where it needs basketball. To go. <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's a new GPS system. Not these whole big satellites that are up there doing fancy things. Yeah, All you need like, is a basketball hoop and some wire. Exactly, and I was like, why don't we use that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I became so humble. Yeah. The, other people's you think you're the best, there's always somebody out there that does better. And that was such an important life lesson for me. I was about to actually ask, what did you learn from that experience? Because mm. you are surrounded, as you're saying, by people who are possibly better than you, although you're really good yourself. I hope yeah, yeah. You, you knew that about yourself, I, right? I, I didn't do quite bad. I, was <laughs> like, I actually stressed, maybe I won't get an award. <laughs> mm. But you came third. So being around other people, what other things did you learn? Except the whole thing of, you know, there's always someone out there that's better than you. Whether it was a techni technical thing that you mm. learned or something that you were inspired by. Yeah, definitely. Um, from being... The, the guy with, with the basketball, mm. he actually was from, um, I think, China. I can't remember quite mm. well. But it's like, maybe he isn't in the best circumstance, but he was like, I want to do something. Mm. Let's do it. Okay? And he did mathematics to a master's in South Africa level. Like, wow. that, that amount of intelligence he has, he has to build up, and he's only like grade 11 or something in China somewhere. Wow. And uh, that was mind-blowing to me. I didn't understand a single thing that was on his project board, display board. <laughs> um, that was super, in <sighs> that was brilliant for me. Um, and to so actually come up with a prototype, the electronic mm -hmm. skill that comes with that. Um, luckily, I've, I've done that as well. Yeah. So I, understand, I understood that. But just being humble and saying you're not the best there is. But also pushing yourself because you're seeing what other great things people out there can do. So it's something that you can aspire yeah, to be at that exactly. level as well. It's like, I'm not the best that I can be because there's other people there that did better than me. Yeah. Okay. It's like, all right. I know a few achievements I've done, yeah. but I can definitely improve. I can always, always do more. I like that. Yeah. You, you were inspired. You weren't envious. Because it's very, it's a, it's a thin it's line. A yeah. <laughs> it's a thin line. Youth Leader of the Year nominee, a young inventor, Armand Dwebenach. If you'd like to vote for him, Youth1 is his code. 43043 is where you need to SMS it to if you'd like him to walk away with the SATI 2016 Youth Leader of the Year Award. But as I mentioned earlier, this is a young guy, 18 years old, a matric student, a regular person who's surrounded by teachers, parents, and fellow learners. We got some time to sit down with them and find out what they had to say about Armand. He started quite early, almost a year before the competitions he started. And um, maybe I should start a bit earlier. Even in the primary school, he always wanted to do Expo, but I told him, because I'm involved in the organizing of it, I'm not going to let him have a, do a project, because then people will think it's my kid that he gets the prizes, so he will never be able to, to participate. And he kept on asking me, and later on I said, okay, if you want to do it one year, it should be grade 10. He actually worked harder than I thought he would. <laughs> because he was committed almost every afternoon in the week, three, four hours he was working. And actually I thought, what's going to happen with his schoolwork? <laughs> and I was actually amazed that he did it himself. <laughs> it meant I could actually 
stop panicking and get a bit of sleep because I had spent I think the last few days panicking about whether this would actually get through the metal detector at the airport, whether it would get uh, in, into America, whether it would get out of America, whether it would work on 120 volts when you got there, or whether the smoke would come out and would, you know, the whole thing would be a waste of time. So it was a very stressful um, couple of days. But uh, yeah, when, when we actually heard that he came, that he got a th third prize, I mean, it was amazing. I mean, it must be even more amazing for him. But yes, we all stayed up to, to see if we could get these results. Um, you know, you could follow it on Twitter and various other pla places where people were, were posting things. And yeah, just the, um, the fact that he actually got a prize. I mean, of the South Africans, I think 12 South Africans went, and I think only three or four actually got prizes. So it was really, it, it was amazing. It was something that he started as maybe a small idea and he just kept on going. He's one of those people that he won't stop until he makes a success of it and he puts in everything. Armand is very intelligent. Um, this shines through and it can be intimidating. Um, but he's a brilliant guy once you get to know him. Um, just an all-round great guy, uh, smart. Um, and as a friend, he's, he's always there for you. He works hard. Uh, but he plays hard as well. <laughs> uh, the band's real fun. So Armand, um, <laughs> he's never told me this, but I know he thinks his girlfriend sings better than me. I know this, uh, <laughs> but he's not told me this, but I know this. Ah, a young inventor who's also a musician, I see, Armand. So you've got hidden talents. You're a whole part, you're a member of a band? Yes, um, <laughs> we sell bow ties as our band name. <laughs> Like, we sell bow ties. We sell bow ties. But now, if I came across that name as a bad name, I'd want to come and buy bow ties from you. So, do you do that too? And sell bow ties as the group band? <sighs> Maybe one day when we, we want to sell merchandise. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Then the bow ties are going to be your merchandise. Exactly. Tell me about stumbling into music. And is that a form of escapism for you? So that when you're not in the books, you know, this is what you like oh, to do definitely. for fun. Definitely. Um, that was a big passion of mine. Um, one of the talents God has given me. Mm. And uh, it was like, I picked up the guitar and quite never really put it down, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Special hidden talents. Mm. I hear that uh, Bertie tells me in my ear, while well, we actually saw it in the insert as well, that one of your friends says that your girlfriend's a better singer. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. And that doesn't bother you. Not at all. Mm -hmm. He's a brilliant singer. I don't take that away from him, but... Uh, and yeah. any future plans with the music, or is it strictly the science? Ooh, I don't know. I'm quite in a fumble over here. Mm -hmm. um, the music works. It's such a big passion of mine. And, um, but the science is also there, and that's, ooh, that's, that's also brilliant. Um, definitely, I'm, I'm like 50-50 at the moment. Um, uh, how would your parents actually feel about you going to, let's say, an art school and going to study something like the guitar, study music further, mm. as opposed to, you said to me earlier um, off air that you're going to Tux next year and you're going to be studying electrical engineering. So what would your parents say if, they, if you turned around and said, guys, actually, I want to study music? They'll, they'll, they'll be like, well, you can probably do what you want, but uh, don't do it. <laughs> trick it's like you can do what you want but don't do it exactly um but the, they said you can do whatever you want yeah. in your free time and in your free time so they're making it known that music is a free time thing mm. but they're not imposing it upon you your parents are sneaky i see that <laughs> vote for armand rovanaka a young man who's not only an inventor in terms of electrical means but looks like he's got some electrical strings there going with his guitar youth one is his voting code 43043 is where you can sms it to you can also email youth one to satyvoting at nn7.com <laughs> Be, be the best part of you, be the best version of yourself. Um, always, always just do better than you possibly can imagine. Mm -hmm. Strive doing better and better and better.
Welcome back. You're watching the South African of the Year Daily Show right here on NN7 as we count down to SETI 2016 happening on the 25th of November at the Ticket Pro Dome. If you'd like to stand a chance to win tickets, it's really simple. You just need to jump onto our website. Another website you can visit other than nn7.com is sati.co.za. Find out how you can stand a chance to win tickets to come to the awards because tickets are not on sale, Baba. Melu interisha, one melu vote, and then also zvona olapo. In the studio today, just wrapping up an interview with you leader of the year nominee 18 year old inventor armand Duvenacher. armand it's matric you know you've just finished your prelims mm. and it's it's almost finals time you know how are you preparing especially if another young person is watching you and yeah 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 they are panicking because this is it yeah it's the final one mm -hmm. um last one which is so exciting <laughs> to finish off things mm -hmm. um workout exams work out previous exam papers all the time know what they're asking um, know what to write because ish, the market is looking for for this one thing you have to 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 write so you have to be like become them mm. in a way have their mindsets when you answer it. <laughs> <laughs> and what would you say has been your fondest memory as school going childhood memory over the last 18 years because it's it's the end of an era you know 18 years in school is a long time and here it comes to an end what are you taking away from the experience Sitting on your butt and learning, mm. <laughs> um, just just having that ability is quite difficult. Um, just when further studies and um, to be able to to do excellent, and the only thing that that helps with that is mm. to sit and learn. Oh. Because excellence is a habit. Looking into 2017 and the future, once you're done and you've matriculated, because I have no doubt, your, your name is going to be in the newspaper. It's not going to be a thing. <laughs> you are looking at studying towards, is it a BSc in electrical engineering? That is what they call it, a BSc, right? Uh, Bachelor B, B engineering. B, B eng. yes, you're B so right. Yeah. So you can tell I've been out of school for like 10 years. <laughs> oh, What are your plans with this degree? Because you must have thought about it carefully as to why you mm. want to do electrical engineering. Yeah, um, one of the category uh, prizes, mm. one of the category prizes, I for one, uh, was sponsored by Saab Grintech okay. and uh, or Saab Technologies. They, they have this different department. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, they, they sponsored it, and I was like, well, thank you for, I emailed them and said, thank you for, for this amazing award, and thanks for the money, you know, prize mm. money. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm going to go to school with. <laughs> Of course. Uh, <laughs> Sneaky. Yeah. So um, why electrical engineering? I mean, I understand that your, your project was around electricity, but what's your passion about it? Ooh, there's nothing more satisfying than programming and it you know, actually works. Mm. Pressing enter on your computer and then the light turns off right at the other side of the room wirelessly is like nothing more satisfying. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, Saab Technologies um, make defense systems mm -hmm. for... Um, for big warfare, etc., et uh, electronic warfare. Oh wow! So they they make systems that detect when an RPG comes and and then kicks in a lot of protocols that helps to prevent um, the asset being destroyed or whatever. So that was like that, that, that's where you're headed. That, that's my 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 young boyhood. Yeah, dreams um, like, uh, <laughs> to stop electrical warfare and just see things exploding in cyberspace. Yes. Well, we exactly. wish you all the best with that, Arman. Now, okay. you're on the South African of the Year Daily Show, and the show is all about celebrating South Africans. Mm -hmm. So we want to celebrate how much you know about South Africa with a little bit of a trivia. Ask you five questions, some general knowledge questions, and we see how you do. Are you ready? <laughs> I don't really watch news that oh, much. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to have to see how it goes. Mm. All right, question number one. I think this one's an easy one. What is South Africa's biggest export? Ooh. It's a mineral. It's between coal and gold. You've got to pick one. <sighs> Yo, um, I'd say gold. There you go. See, you're making this hard for yourself. One out of one. Next question. Which is the only metal that is liquid at room temperature? Um, I don't know the English word, but mm -hmm. quick. Is that mercury? Yeah. It sounds right. <laughs> just right here. I'm just going to say yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next question. South Africa is located at the southern part of the African continent. How many countries does it border? Four. Four? Five. Five? Two, two. Mm. Six. Six is one. The, the, yeah. yeah. Six. Five or six? Six. 
I'm so glad your yes. final answer is correct. Yes. All right, next question. Which two deserts are found in Southern Africa? Ooh. Some geography, not so much science. Oh, I did so bad in geography. <laughs> I was learning. Work. Take a guess. Uh, Kalori. Yeah, the Sreh. And the... Uh, it's by a country that's like on that side of the map, by the Northern Cape. Sounds like a country. <sighs> Must I give it to you? Yeah, I can I give, give you half me. a point because you got half of it. It's the Namib, Namib Desert. So I was oh. trying to say like Swiss Namibia. I know, what, I know Namibia it's there, but I don't know what it is there. <laughs> Not bad. Namib Desert, so okay, you, no, you got no. half a point there. So you have three and a half. Okay. This, this, oh, this oh, need oh. this lach okay. All right. Question number five. Who is the first South African artist to win a BET award? Now you have to be a cool kid. This is entertainment. Yo. He's a DJ. He wears glasses. And it's not tea, but it's... Black coffee. <laughs> well done. So four and a half. I feel like I should take away that half because I helped you with that clue. But this needs to slack me. Four and a half out of five. That's all good, mm. hey? All right, Arman, thank you so much for your time um, on the show today. But before we say goodbye to you, there's other young people who are mm. doing extraordinary things in your category. You know, what are your words of advice to other young people as well who might not be aspiring scientists, but they're just young people who want to do great things? Just keep striving towards excellence. Mm. Be be the best part of you, be the best version of yourself. Um, always always just do better than you possibly can imagine. Mm. Strive doing better and better and better. Now I know your parents are probably going to be watching, you know, mm. and you might not always get the opportunity to say to them, "Ah, oh, Mama, Papa, it's for your bye, thank you for alles." So, if there was something you had to say to your parents, what would that be? Because it's it's eighteen years of a life that they've had to be supporting all this time. Mm. Yeah, just thank you for all the support, I guess, and uh, well, the support. I didn't really want to do it. There was mm -hmm. times like I had to work like two in the morning from from after school and didn't get any sleep at all mm. just just them sponsoring me and saying or motivating me rather and saying you have to do you have to be great it's you you're representing yourself and your country mm. ah thank you so much Arman. we wish you all the best congratulations again on your nomination and we will see you on the 25th of november yeah we will do <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, youth leader of the year nominee youth one is his code it's been such a pleasure spending this afternoon with him and just getting to know a little bit more about the science side of life you know runa is the tv presenter sometimes i really tv didn't say but today i was out here with electrical currents and amps and i learned something new so vote for this young man youth one sms that to 43043 or email it to sati voting at nnc com tomorrow evening or maybe next week i guess it will record but when we do come back with the show we'll be sitting down with yet another phenomenal south african who's doing extraordinary things and is of course a nominee in the south african of the year awards 2016 but for now though that's all we've got